Hey, what's up everyone, and welcome to another edition of Little Man Big World, where we interview some wonderful people in our community that your children can look up to. Have you ever come up with an idea one day, just by reflecting upon yourself or a simple chat with your mates? Well, yeah, we all have in one way or another, but the thing is, not everyone tends to act upon these ideas. Today's guest, Johnny Tsimu. Johnny and a couple of his friends decided to start a community group known as Brown Pride. Their mission, to empower Māori and Basvika communities through fitness, arts and community service. These boys have influenced the lives of so many people over these last couple of years. So, here's a story. Here's a story about that idea that started in a room with a group of his friends and what happened when they acted upon it. So we're here right now with um, the one and only Johnny Timu, who is um, one of the co-founders co yeah, right, yeah, of yeah. Brown Pride. Johnny, thanks for coming on, brother. Oh, Appreciate thanks. it. Welcome to our <laughs> house. Welcome to our house. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's, um, yeah, it's pretty cool to be here. Yeah. Uh, just before we get into it, when exactly did you move into this space? Uh, so, uh, yeah, we moved in last year, November, so 2020 November. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, so over the Christmas holidays, the boys just renovated it. And now we're like about one or two months into our, like since we grand or done our grand opening. True. Yeah, yeah. So still young, still young. Still young. Yeah, yeah, still, yeah. Early. still early days. <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll, we'll get right into it. So let's talk about your early life and sort of what led you up to up into the journey that you're going through now. Yeah, yeah. So I know that you, um, from just by the top of my head, you started growing up in Otara. Is yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. And then you later on, you must have moved to the greatest city and, and, and the whole world. <laughs> and the whole world. Um, talk to us about that. What was it like growing up in South Auckland, Otara, and where else you moved? And what was it like growing up as a Samoan family? Um, yeah, so my parents, um, my great aunt, they both met here. Um, and then they got a house on Beds Road in Otara. Um, from there, their house was like sort of the, the gateway for all our cousins and my um, uncles to come to New Zealand. Um, so I grew up around a lot of um, male figures. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty much my mom was the only lady in our house in Otara. Then we moved out to uh, the greatest city in the world, uh, Manrua. <laughs> yeah. um, and I've just been there ever since. Um, I know I wouldn't change a thing. Um, I know there's a lot of stereotypes around South Auckland and stuff, but I think it's, it's the biggest thing that's molded me besides my parents into what I am today. Um, but yeah, we do have our rough, rough spots and whatnot, but uh, it's just homey, like when I go out of South Auckland, just feel mighty or homesick <laughs> and stuff. Eh? So, nah, yeah, I love South Auckland. Uh, well, I always, even if I was to buy a house, I'd probably try to buy a house in South Auckland. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, what I wanted to touch up on as well is um, growing up in Ōtara, your father, he done some, he was used to do like something like you're doing here in our community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was doing something as well back in the days. Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, when I was young, um, we used to go to Otara flea markets. Mm. That was back when I was just in that little hall next to the, the swimming pools. Yeah. Um, and I remember it was just like, just a couple, probably 10, 10, 20, 20 stores max. Um, and slowly he just kept, um, him and a um, friend that he had kept fighting for it to be extended. Um, so asking the council if they could extend it. And then he was just getting his mates that were fruit pickers or that um, made some more offals or, that cook some more food to just um, come along and bring their stool. I think it was like $20 for a space or something like that, like a car park oh. space. And then eventually, yeah, yeah. And um, just to see where Otara Flea Market is now, that's probably like one of the hot spots on day one Saturday mornings um, in Mangri. Like just to see Otara where it's, it like covers the whole car park and it's always packed. It's just buzzing to know that my dad was like there for the the first the early days of it yeah yep. yeah so it was pretty cool yeah yeah because then that sort of transitions into what you're doing now well mm -hmm. i think anyway now you you go through all your you went to did you go to different primary schools or st anne's st anne's yeah, yeah. st anne's and then you went to that stinks yeah <laughs> <laughs> the greatest the greatest <laughs> and you went to de la salle and yeah, then yeah. you come across in a point of your life where you wanted to start a movement um yeah, yeah. and what when did you just what oh sorry what age did you decide that you and your friends wanted to decide uh, start this movement and what made you want to start this movement um i was uh, probably around 21 22 i think uh when i came out of school um 
I was working on the um, older last Saturdays and uh, my cousins, and uh, I really enjoyed it, like the relationship with them, them being my boss. But then once I like either stepped up the ladder or I moved to a different position and then I was put under someone else, mm. I hated it. Eh? And then from there, like from my early days out of school, um, I started like yeah, really hating working under someone else. And from there, I slowly was trying to think like, what am I gonna do? But I just kept mocking about. Um, and then, yeah, once I knew I was having my son, yeah, around 2017, so I would have been, yeah, around 21 or 22. Um, then I started like um, taking it more serious um, and thinking of like what I could do that I enjoy and that I could get paid for and that I could one day make something that I could leave for my son. Um, so yeah, that was around 20, I guess like the whole entrepreneurial dream was born after school around 19, 20. Yeah. But I didn't actually make moves till 21, 22. Um, yeah, and then so I decided this whole, oh, like different things, tried different things. And then um, my mates, yeah, I sort of settled on Brown Pride, but then my mates got um, sporting contracts overseas, my, my core group that I wanted to work with. Um, and then, yeah, I sort of buried the idea of um, starting a social enterprise and I uh, rested it for, I think, two, three years. Yep. And then, yeah, started again in 2019, end of 2019, once the boys were um, come back from their rugby careers and Talili was back from, so yeah, there's six of us, uh, myself, um, Peter Falili, uh, Tino Mafoy, Talili Wilson, Jarrah Smith, and Reginald McFarlane. Um, and me, Rich, and Jai were the only ones here. And we all like being tight since St. Anne's days. Yeah. Um, and Talili. Um, Did they all go? Yeah, so we all went St. Anne's. True. Yeah, so we've been boys since then. And then we went last hour together and we were always catching train and bus together. But Talili was a year older than us. Um, but then after school, yeah, we started kicking it with each other again. Um, but yeah, us three, myself and Jai and Rich were the only ones here. Talili took fighting up in Australia. Mm. and. Uh, Peter and uh, Tino went uh, rugby, Tino went Ireland, and Peter went Spain. So, and I knew just the three of us, we wouldn't have enough manpower and enough um, intelligence within the three of us and to to get it off the ground. Yeah. So, sort of just was like, oh, we'll just chill until the boys come and then we'll try it again. Um, and yeah, we've been blessed yeah, to come this far, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It, it's pretty cool that you guys all decided as a collective group to start it because having big groups can be a hard thing to work together, yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah, awesome yeah, to yeah, hear yeah, that yeah. you know you guys are working yeah, together. Yeah. But um, when we're on the topic of Brown Pride, what is the main reason behind Brown Pride, yeah, Brown Pride really? Um, like, so in, yeah, 2017, Oh, I was 15. No, 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 sorry. 2000. Yeah, oh, 2014, sorry. Yeah, 2004, my first year out of school. Um, my old man passed away in Oz, and I came back, and I was just like, I was in a dark space. I was just working, drinking, working, drinking, repeat, repeat, repeat. Yeah. Um, Sounds a bit like my life. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so again, I was just in a tough spot, and then um, I started listening to music keeps, and I just, some nights I just drink by myself and just listen to music and there was uh, one song in particular I think I uh, can't remember what year it was but um, Poetic um, sang the song um, Brown Brother mm. and it was just about um, empowering um, brown usos to be proud of where they came from and what they're doing and that sort of like made me read into different um, parts of history um, and there's a lot in um, Polynesian history that I wasn't aware of that I learned just through that one song um, can, can you name anything on the top of your head that like, like the thorn raids the uh what else the thorn raids the polynesian panthers mm -hmm. uh, like little things like that that um sort of i didn't understand i've always heard of it like and i just act like oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I really you don't know jack about it yeah. um so after they like listening to that song i started reading and getting into that buzz of reading stuff um harder and then yeah, then I sort of was like, oh, why don't we start? I knew I wanted to start something. Um, I didn't know what, mm. uh, but I knew I was good at fitness. And I knew I really wanted to help out people some way. Um, and then, yeah, the idea of Brown Pride was born. Uh, we had this other idea of um, a thing called um, 
HYA, um, which was helping young Aucklanders. Oh, oh yeah. this is probably the first time I've seen it, like, <laughs> yeah. as well. No one really knows. Actually, missed. I've never heard of this. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, there's this whole concept of um, Hire Me, mm. um, which was sort of what we're doing now, different branches, um, but all under one roof. Mm. Um, so, it's called HYA, Helping Young Aucklanders Enterprise. And um, our plan was to, like, um, run a gym and stuff that will help fund um, us employing young guys to get into security or the vanning containers or random Just like in the random, yeah, yeah, in, yeah yeah in general but then um i don't know i think i was just there was no passion behind it like i think at that time like the intention and the whole idea came off we need to try and make money mm. um and there was no real core values to it it was yeah. just try and make money and yeah, like it was all about the hustle that's good but there was no meaning behind everything um then i think we went like not even a year probably a couple months like trying to ride that out um didn't make much and it wasn't going anywhere and i could tell the boys were so invested then i came up with the brown pride idea yeah and then i could tell like we all were sold to it that like yeah we can we can really grow this into something serious and then yeah um yeah and then we started like with training like I, my first ever training oh i have well, i don't think i've ever seen this as well <laughs> was that um out in um what's that word near barney's farm you know where barney's farm is and river like i'm um, at the back of clandon oh uh, yeah yeah there's a i forgot what it's called it's off burundi yeah. like near us common school there's like a little community center um and there used to be mums there like um all ladies from around the area and they reached out to me um, when I was working as a trainer in, at Jets, mm. to see they wanted to um, do some training for the Maldives and the Pacific Islanders in that little Barney farm and Burundi area. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. And, there, and then we, I started training, like, I think it was like three ladies on every Friday. Of, um, and yeah, that was, that was about, like my group. It was three, then it grew to four, then five. Some days there'll be one. She and was I was in humble, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just me and Jairus at that time. Uh, Ridge was um, uh, like, I was too shy to tell Ridge because Jairus is my cousin and we've been on um, blood since day one. Mm. And like, I trusted him and he, he, he like was just supporting me. Just, even if he does nothing, if he just comes and just holds the pads or something, <laughs> he was there. And yeah, even like, yeah, I feel fully forgot about it until like recently. I think it was at our opening, we had a drink up then, and Jai was like, so I remember when we first started, you first, first started Brown Pride, it was like three people. And I was like, oh shit, yeah, it was those three ladies at there. So it was like a little community center, and at the back they had like a little garden for the community to come to their little garden. That was a, like, it was probably like five meters, six meters squared. True. I used to train them. <laughs> And like they had nothing, they had probably one dumbbell, one kettlebell, and then I bring my pads and gloves. Um, but that's where like I first started. You know what? They probably out there. You wish I would. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they were like, oh, it's funny because it was for free, and <laughs> like I was just buzzing like that. I remember like just having free day. I was like, oh, like oh. Yeah. Then this one day, the lady that runs the community center was like, what are we gonna call this? And I was like, oh shit, 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 whatever. <laughs> what are we gonna call it? And I was just like. Brown Pride, that's what it's called, Brown Pride. <laughs> yeah, and then I just sort of, yeah, it's just sort of slowly worked its way there, and then, then yeah, the name just felt catchy to me. Mm. Um, but since day one, it's always been just about helping out people. Yeah. I never thought it would blow up to what it is now, but I knew if I could help my people and master that, and then I could help other people. There's that whole saying about um, make sure your grass is cut or whatever or <laughs> before looking at someone else some shit like that or maybe it's sure your backyard grass now. <laughs> yeah make sure your backyard or something so nah, yeah yeah, I know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh i don't forgot that thing but yeah that thing <laughs> yeah so yeah yeah i was trying to fix out people before i try to be a hero for other people or whatever um but yeah this, that was God, hopefully that um answers the question that, yeah no nah, that does because then that brings you back to our, uh brings us to our next question yeah, actually, you've, you've explained a lot about, um, you know, the, the early stages. Mm -hmm. well, let's just talk about the movement now and where it is, and especially getting this venue. What were the steps 
like the important steps you reckon you guys took in order to get to from then until now what are some of the steps that if you could break it down a little bit maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. um for me i think um from scratch having the um, knowing your values and having something if you if you um what's the word if you if you discover upon the idea of something you love and something that's giving back mm. then way better ideas come whereas if you base it off trying to get income yeah. or trying to get another stream of income then it's gonna go nowhere so find something you're passionate about um that's probably the first thing um then from there is like really crunching the numbers and the knowing your wording and whatever so that's mm. why i went to a business course so i've done a um, small business course at te wangano oh it's about six months yeah but um i done it i learned some like small things that i reckon are, are, are useful but majority of it was all was all like waste of time yeah yeah <laughs> like you like you learn about accounting and marketing whereas you can use different things yeah. and it was all old school marketing like yeah. newspaper ads and, <laughs> and like tv adverts and shit like that yeah. um so i found a lot of that not useful oh there was a bits that I, I still remember from that but then um the course i found useful was an aut course called co-starters mm -hmm. and it's um it's mainly around and it's and it's like a short course about three months or two months and it's like it's just like everything you need and it's it's fully based off passion not paperwork like oh, oh it was like true. that it was like finding what you're good at finding what you enjoy ways to like finding you know, one of those that can make money mm. then seeing if there's a competition out there and then just driving off there and like that's what really um because um Te Wangana made me come up with the HYA idea yeah because it was all business orientated and money driven and then that co-starters was real passion driven mm. and that's where Brown Pride was born from mm -hmm. so I done two different courses back to back and that's why the ideas were pretty much back to back yeah I just I, I clicked when I tried to take their higher in, uh yeah higher enterprise helping young Aucklanders enterprise and try to do co-starters like that was passion driven yeah it just wasn't going anywhere because it was all based off money yeah yeah uh, even though it says helping young Aucklanders, I was trying to help young Aucklanders get money. Yeah, and yeah, it was yeah. it was more based on how can you guys make money. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Money. Yeah, yeah. So, and then yeah, Brown Pride was just a fresh idea. And I remember my tutor, um, oh, I don't remember his name, but <laughs> <laughs> like so the whole class was all Balangis and Asians and Indians, but this guy was a Fijian and he just opened our True. IT business, and he was like. He kept like he always done extra time for me. Like he'll come early, let me come early, and just like he'll help me, and then let me stay late, use the computer, print out as much as I want. Oh, um, yeah, one day I'll probably come across him and just say thanks. Yeah. But yeah, that's pretty much where Brown Pride was really born from. So now Brown yeah. Pride, you guys do the whole fitness, run this awesome yeah. fitness program, these challenges. You guys have a barber shop here it's over there um yeah, and you guys are um i don't know if you guys have started your music studio oh yeah the music studio is yeah. at the back so it's they got a music studio there. over here yeah. and then they're just a whole a community yeah, yeah. but um not everything is always going to be and you've already touched this um touched up on this uh, um before but not everything is going to be you know amazing you know yeah, there's yeah, going to yeah. be some tough times so what's the hardest thing you find you know yeah yeah um here. The hardest thing, I guess, um, first off, is just the, the team that we have. Like, we're all just brown South Auckland dudes, young, no qualification or no flash qualifications. We have the basics. Um, and yeah, we, we just got this, like, dark cloud that, yo, we're so South Auckland. It just follows mm -hmm. us area. Um, whether we walk into a medium with suits on or shirts on or ties on, we still look down on once we see where we're from, once we start talking if we don't have the flash words we're just still <laughs> slanging our words um, that's probably one of the biggest challenges um, but business wise I think another big challenge is we, we now that we're passionate and um, we're all hot yeah. um, hot doesn't always pay the bills mm. like we, we got rent here to pay we got electricity we got wi-fi got water um, got equipment like everything's real expensive um, and though we want to help our people as much as we can, 
uh, we knew the struggles real. We, 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 none of us are like, um, what do you call it? None of us are bowling or we haven't made it. Um, and it sucks that we have to ask people to pay. Yeah. Where we know there's a lot of government funding out there that's paying other things that mm. just go to waste. Whereas, like, oh, I'm not mean, I'm not trying to be biased or um, be big headed, but in South Auckland right now, we've probably got one of the strongest reaches, but we're not funded by anyone. Yeah. Uh, we have small programs that's funded, but that's peanuts compared to like some of these other organizations that are got full-time workers, got five vans, got a whole property funded, um, but got like two two people, two youth that turn up. Yeah. And whereas in a day like today, um, by the end of tonight, there will probably be close to 300 or 200 people that walk through the doors. Um, and that's, yeah, that's something tough um, for me, is just trying to understand and trying to just hack it that like we're not we're not funded or any like I think you have to be patient yeah. about that. That's one of the hardest things, especially like seeing other groups and people say to us, "Oh, these guys must be funded or these guys must be government supported." <laughs> like, so I wish. Yeah. Do you uh, think we would ask you? To pay yeah, yeah, we yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, because that's why we, our motto from day one has been for the people, by the people. Mm. Like, we're here for the people, but we can only do so much for the people because they're supporting us. Yeah. Uh, like they pretty uh, like I tell them, um, when they come here, walk in, they knock on the door. This is your place. They they paid for. We didn't have like flash savings or we <laughs> didn't know take a massive loan and just pay for. We just saved money since day one that we started Brown Pride mm. of their money and just now we've, we've, we've you been just reinvested it. Back yeah, 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 yeah. Just recycling. That's why. Yeah, it's for the people and it's by the people. It's not by us. Mm. We're just like the middleman, the controller of everything. Um, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe soon we'll get it. Maybe someone will watch this and like hit <laughs> up um, Jacinda and say, Auntie, you uh, sponsor the boys. <laughs> now, I, like, you talk about how you said, you know, you don't really think you've made it. But man, like, ever since I've been able to, ever since I've heard about you guys doing this, I like, everyone has their own versions of success, right? Mm -hmm. But I think you guys... This, for me, this would be, you've, you've made it. You've definitely mm -hmm. made it. There's actually more goal. I know you guys have yeah, way more yeah, you guys yeah. want to achieve, but yeah, yeah. this is, I think this is yeah, something yeah, that yeah. you can be really proud of. Don't yeah, you? yeah. I think, I think at times, um, especially me, uh, like being like the one that sort of gave the idea to the boys, mm. um, I never celebrate the small ones because I know we can do way better. Because mm. I know like this is, I didn't pour my full heart into it. I still got shit in my heart that I can I can still provide. And I know the boys can too. Uh, that's why I know they haven't given up. Um, and yeah, yeah, for us, a lot of, yeah, yeah like, uh, yeah, like people always remind us, like, oh, he's made it, he's be proud. Yeah, well, I'm proud, but um, I know we're far from our yeah. potential. Yeah, I think this is our second stepping stone, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's a good mindset to have too. Yeah, always yeah, growing, yeah. never stop learning. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never want to get comfortable. Eh? Yeah. That's why I jumped on that 75 hard. Because yeah. I could tell I was getting comfortable, I was getting lazy. Um, so yeah, I jumped on that 75 hard challenge, which is cool. And so we've talked about the hardest thing, now let's flip it. What's, yeah. what's some of the most enjoyable times or what's your most, what's the most fun thing you like doing? Oh. Uh, just uh, making people smile or laugh. Yeah. Um, that's probably makes my day um, and just the different things that people say to us like just this morning yeah just just this morning when the girl said brown pride saving her life um, yeah. just because she's she's um, in a bad health state or whatever uh, mm. she's away or whatever but she's working on it now um, and so yeah that that stuff that wakes you up in the morning and like people are like Sally you just went to sleep not long ago I was like, nah, man, there's someone that's depending on me to help them save their own lives. So, yeah, that's worth, it's worth my time getting up. Um, even though I'm tired, at least someone's alive because I'm tired. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's the, yeah, that's the coolest thing, I think, for me. And just um, connecting people, because eh? like, I think a lot of us are trying to run our own race and mm. we're trying to just live our own lives and we forget there's dudes right next to us that are sort of on the same path. It's like, why don't we just share our advices or talk, or just talk, just talk in general and see where we can help each other. Mm. Everyone's too busy just chasing their own bag or whatever. Mm. Um, 
where we could just split the bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, share it out. Yeah. Um, so that's yeah, very enjoyable and just having the boys, the the, the guys that are. I, w- I like I wouldn't say starve if there was never a time where our parents wouldn't feed us, but the guys that were in the trenches or like we done all our stupid stuff and um, we've done our wrongs or whatever. But now to see where we've come from, mm-hmm. just to see the boys and the the way they've changed and being confident and speaking in public is real cool. It's um, and I'm always proud of those guys. And yeah, it's just those are probably the best things. Oh, and just being your like not your own boss, um, but doing your own thing yeah yeah you're doing something that you enjoy you yeah, yeah 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 because i uh, like even rookie still working that last song yeah i enjoy it because it's with the youth mm. like i would have hated i would have already left at that job because i could grow this more because i still enjoy that and it pays my bills like because this ain't paying any of us yet um like the boy like now and then i can check them a bit of coin but it's not paying anyone's bills or it's not uh, on go- going here on fixed like oh these guys are getting paid these no the boys still work full time <laughs> i still work part time to pay my bills and um yeah yeah but it's still i'm having loads of fun if i wasn't i'd probably be asleep at home or at a boring year 95. <laughs> <laughs> i'd either be in bed by like nine or ten yeah o'clock. yeah i was <laughs> just jamming the game or something at home. <laughs> uh, all right so um as we sort of come near towards the end of our talk, you would have had some inspiration from people to look up to over mm-hmm. you know, your years of living. Who's, who's someone that inspires you or someone that you've like gained real good, great inspiration from? Um, I think for me, like as cliche or as overused that it is, is I figured my parents, mm. uh, for my mum, my mum's got a massive heart. And she's always like trying to help people or um, look out for others or or like yeah she's always been someone that's trying to help people and whereas my dad is always someone that's just socialized just doesn't care who's who he'll just <laughs> socialize with anyone <laughs> yeah. and when you put those together you get a person like me who's i don't mind talking or meeting with anyone yeah. and like i'll care for anyone as long as they care for me mm. That's that. That's where I think I got mine. And my mom's mentality was hard work. Like she was studying, working, like sometimes working like long hours, and then feeding us kids, getting us ready for school. Whereas my dad was trying to work smart. He was trying to get into the business. So that's where I think I get my hard work and my sort of smart work from. Yeah. So uh, yeah, my parents were. If I was a celebrity, someone I look up to is probably The Rock. He's my other uncle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's mine too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We must be cousins. <laughs> but like, yeah, he's someone I look up to. Um, if you look at his daily routine, so like, I thought my Crazy, one was ruthless. Yeah, yeah, yeah this guy's one's mm. overboard. It's like that 75 day hard challenge that I'm doing. That's like his normal life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like work out, works out like twice, if not three times a day. Has all his movies or whatever. Got his businesses. Um, and he still sleeps hardly any hours. Do you eat food like him too? Because there's portions of Oh, there. nah, <laughs> I try to eat. Eh? The boys call me lightweight because I can't eat. I try as much as I can <laughs> eat heaps so I have energy. But yeah. nah, like sometimes, yeah. Um, but um, with, with what you're doing and what you and the boys are doing, it's pretty inspiring as me being someone that's about, that's older than you, you know, I li- look up to you, well, I literally look up to you anyway, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, not just myself, but a lot of, you know, young people, not just Islanders in general will be, you know, um, they'll be hearing the story and that, you know, they may one day want to step into this sort of zone, starting a movement of something that has some great core values. Mm. If someone, if you, someone young was to come up to ask you, like your son or anyone else, what would be your best piece of advice for them? Um never 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 have the intention of um chasing money mm. money will come money will come someday um it still hasn't come for us but <laughs> we, we 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 know and we trust in god that that um that if we put our heart first and for put people first the blessings will come someday mm. um there's already been blessings on our lives already 
with the relationships we've um, found within Brown Pride, the friends we've made, the, the gym we have, that even our just our friendships gone way stronger. Um, yeah, heart goes way longer than chasing money. Um, yeah, that's probably my biggest advice is put people first and everything else will fall into place. I like that, yeah. yeah. I think a lot of islanders can relate to that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and so that's pretty much it, bro. So yeah. um, what is the plans for Brown Pride? We're in the month of May 2021. Yeah, yeah. What's got a year plan, a couple years plan, 10 years plan? What's what's coming yeah. up for you guys? Um, after this, I'm going to a meeting uh, with the new FM team. Um, uh, we've got two events coming up, a big charity fight night and then um, a charity concert uh, where we're bringing um, some international stars over. Well, hopefully, oh, if COVID doesn't come back. Uh, <laughs> so that's like our, our near future um, plans. Um, but I think around the end of the year, we got a, like, a massive announcement to make. Um, I reckon it's huge. To us, it's huge. Yeah. And it's, it's like, like, I thought we're, we're at a certain level, but that's just... So, yeah, yeah, more. yeah, way more, and uh, it'll, be, it'll be a massive surprise to everyone as well, as much as it was to us. Like we, we thought this would come for us in five, ten years time, yeah. Um, but yeah, we've been blessed that we're, we, yeah, we're currently taking the steps into this new project. Yeah, yeah, which I'm, uh, I'm excited, but I'm scared about, but I'm always keen on a challenge and always keen on the pressure of something new, um, and I'm, I'm happy because I was starting to get comfortable here. Yeah. Yeah, and I just want a new challenge. Like yeah. So yeah, uh, there's yeah, yeah. If you just keep in contact or follow the socials, uh, I think we're announcing it soon. Um, hopefully, because um, it's, it's it's hard to like keep holding on to <laughs> when people um. ask you what's what's, what's next, what's next. <laughs> yes, but there is big um big plans and big moves um coming up. Um, yeah, I'm excited to share that with everyone. Cool. Yeah. And before I let you go, how can people reach out to you guys? And I'll make sure to tag it all um, um, in yeah. this interview. Uh, so our brown, our brown Pride Instagram is um, brownpride.nz. Our Brown Pride Facebook is Brown Pride Space NZ, I think. <laughs> and then um, our email is admin at brownpride.co.nz. Um, our address is 19B Norman Spencer Drive in Manukau. Um and, and you can't miss this building too. Yeah, a massive yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a massive <laughs> brown pride sign there. Um, yeah, and yeah, my my Instagram is Johnny Timu, I think. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, some, I think it's something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh no, it's Gux Deluxe, <laughs> the Rock's nephew. You know. It's Paul <laughs> Cassi. <laughs> yeah, forever. <laughs> nah, yeah, I think that's yeah, that's about it. Yeah, but just reach out with whether, whether to do with fitness, whether it's to do life in general, or some business advice, and we'll try to help wherever we can. Yeah. All right, cool. Thanks Thank for that, bro. Oh, Appreciate your time, man. Shout out, so. Thanks, bro. <laughs> so that is it, guys. That is the story of Johnny Timu and what it's like being the director of Brown Pride. If you would like to get in contact with the Brown Pride organization because they are an awesome group to be a part of, then just head over to www.brownpride.co.nz. I can tell you now, you won't regret it. We do apologize, guys. We are still out of our stock of our LMBW Premium gutter boards. We are working as fast and hard to get them back for all your children. So yeah, just keep an eye out on our social media platforms because we will keep everyone up to date, whether that's on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or TikTok. But I do appreciate your patience and hopefully we can be back in stock as soon as possible. And one final message is I always say, please, please, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and feel free to even like, comment, or share this content. But don't forget, and most importantly, please subscribe. Click that subscribe button, click that bell button so you're notified every time there's an episode released. But other than that, fam, if not, we'll see you on the very next episode of Little Man Big World.